Okay, good evening. Welcome to the Thursday, July 20th, 2017 edition of the Auburn Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, before we get started this evening, I have to ask if anybody is recording the meeting this evening. Okay, hearing none, seeing none. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to open the hearing, open the meeting, excuse me. Motion to open. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so before we get started this evening, I need to go over a couple of administrative things. Our vice chair is not here this evening, and we're missing a, Mr. a member, Mr. Cussie. So um, we're going to be moving our um, alternate member, Ms. Blaze, up to a full voting member this evening. Uh, also, for the applicant, before we begin your hearing, I need you to know that in order for us to vote on your uh, proposal this evening, we would have to have a supermajority, which means that all four of the members would have to vote in favor of your proposal in order for you to get it granted to be passed through. Uh, um, so. With that being said, we're going to open the hearing, but I want you to know the option for you to have is to continue it until the next meeting. Um, we can open the hearing, we can discuss it. If we choose not to vote, we can. you can request a continuance. I just want you to be aware of that, so during the process here, if you feel as though um, that may be necessary, it's your option, okay? Uh, do we have any abutters present this evening also before I start? Okay. So with that being said, we have a seven o'clock hearing. Applicant David Hall requesting a variance under section 5.4 of the Auburn Zoning Bylaws to allow for the construction of a single family dwelling on a property located at 8 Shirley Street, Auburn, Mass. Map 11, parcel 142. Is the applicant present? If you could approach the lectern, please, sir. If you could approach the lectern, please, sir. Introduce yourself. Uh, do we have a motion to open the hearing? Motion open. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good evening, sir. If you could just go over. Good evening. Um, some of the uh, issues you have with this and the application process and what you're looking to do? Yes, um, when I purchased the property a couple of years ago, from the former building inspector, it was deemed a bit of a lot. I have the paper that says it, was, says it was, and then my attorney and I, we bought the land from Mr. Beckham, and, um, not Beckham, excuse me, and um, I was talking to the building, the new building inspector now, and, and he interpreted that it, he thinks it wasn't a buildable lot. So um, I gathered all my facts and everything I have to see if I needed a variance, or I can build as a, I'm assessed as a buildable lot. Mm -hmm. The 1300 code says that on the taxing bill, and um, I'm here to see if I actually need a variance or um, to apply for one if I do. Okay. Um, would you like to add anything else but I, for, before I open it to the members of the board to ask questions? You can approach, please, sir. Okay. Uh, my, my builder is here with me. My attorney couldn't be here tonight. He has, his son's operating on today. Oh, yeah, we can. Hello. Hi, sir. Could you introduce yourself, please? Yeah. My name, my name is Harry Avery, a longtime friend of uh, David Hall and also the general contractor. Okay. So reading through your packet here, and I just want to make sure I understand everything first, is that we have a question of, it was a, at one time this was a conforming lot. Um, it was passed at town meeting many years ago that they would change the size and the uh, frontage requirement of the lot. And we have some, I think, if I'm reading this correctly, and we'll all go over it together to make sure we're clear, that we have um, a discrepancy in the interpretation, I believe. Yes. And that's what we're trying to determine, whether or not this is a, very, a, a lot that requires a variance or could be built upon. Yes. Okay. Um, with that be being said, Mr. Cussie, do you have any, I'm sorry, excuse me, Mr. Ciccolo, do you have any comments or questions to the applicant? Do you, do you have a plot plan with the proposed house on that? Do you have that? Yes, we do. May we see that? Absolutely. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. It should be in your packet. It's in your, it's your packet. packet. It's in your packet. Keep flipping. With the house on it? It's right here. Proposed house. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the plot plan. I... Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. This is a determination from the previous business. That's right. Do you know the name of the previous inspector? I see initials, but that's all I see. Nick. Um, Is that uh, Don Miller? I don't know how to spell his last name. I don't know. I have it here if you want the paper. Through the chair, if I may, I believe there was a determination from Mr. Miller that it was a buildable lot. Um, there was also a determination 
from Nick that it was a buildable lot, and there was also a determination that it was not a buildable lot from Nick, I believe. A lot of back and forth, right. different information. Well, that's probably Nick. Was that okay. and Nick in 13? Yes. And this, this, what I see here, is what you intend to build? Yes. That is, the previous one was a 2,000 square foot, four bedroom, two and a half bath, but that's from 2013. Is that? That's, some, that's someone else, that's not me. And so this house is a, how many bedroom? Three. Three? Yep, um, it doesn't even need a variance size-wise. It's 30 by 30, it's gonna fit 20, 20, 10. It's okay. All right, that's all I have for right now until I hear the abutters. Okay. Ms. Blaze? Um, so this is correct, say so the lot size is 69.92? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, I don't have any questions at the moment. Just I'd like to hear more information. Ms. Roach? I would agree. I want to hear from the abutters first. Okay, so um, if we could, if you'd like to have any public comments, could you please approach the lectern? If you could give your name and address and talk about your concerns or your expectations. Brian Plesneski, 10 Shirley Street. Uh, I really don't have any concerns. Uh, the only the only main concern I've already talked to Dave about it was um, is a stone wall that goes from the beginning of Shirley Street to the back of the lot and it's just a stone like the cobblestone field stone that the, was dumped mm -hmm. I just didn't know by construction if that would collapse and then I would lose start losing some of my property but I mean I've talked to the the owner mm -hmm. so I mean this for me there's no concern. Okay. And otherwise, otherwise, besides the issue with the wall, you have no concern with them constructing a home on the property, though? No. Okay. I'd like to ask a question. Is that a boundary marker between the two properties, the stone wall? That I, and, and that's at the back of your property, I believe? There is. Uh, there have been several uh, surveyors that have come and put the stake in with a little pink. In, in, the, in stone, the ground. In the stone wall. Um... Yes. Okay, and again, that's at the back of your property, correct? There's, uh, there's one at the front and there's one at the back. Um, As they're going up the hill, do you live above this lot? Or I live above it? the lot. You live above the lot, okay. And there is a surveyor's stake marking those stone walls as brown boundary markers? Yes, and then on the map, you can see there's the stone wall will start and then it kind of comes into my property and then goes back out. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions for Lee Butter? Um, Ms. Blaze or Ms. Roach? Just quickly, do you happen to know what the square footage on your lot is? What? Do you know what the square footage on your lot is? You don't know. Not off the no. top of my head. That's okay. No, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Ms. Blaze? Oh, you do. Caleb knows it. Caleb, do you have any comments you'd like to add? It's pretty similar. Mm hmm. It's looks smaller, actually. Number 10 Shirley Street is approximately 100 feet deep. And 60 feet wide, similar size. Mm -hmm. Okay. As are most of the other lots on the street. Right. Okay. So approximately 6,000 square feet? That's correct. Ish. Okay. Thanks, Kim. When was your house built? Sorry. Approximately. Approximately. Well, Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> That's all right. I've been there about 30 years. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, next, please. If Again, if you introduce yourself with your name and address and then express your concerns. Um, good evening, John Anderson, 15 Shirley Street. We live up the street and across. Um, a couple things that struck me when I looked at this plot plan. Um, first of all, there's a pretty significant pitch to this lot. And I hope that um, the retaining walls on either side that are literally piles of rock 
if there's a necessity to keep to protect the neighbors uphill and downhill, I hope that those things are properly dealt with. Um, the other concern I have is looking at the proposed driveway. I don't know what the zoning laws are but, or the code is, but can that driveway abut the property line? Um, that's a concern. And when I look at this and I see a two car garage with no opportunity to turn cars around exiting, um, Shirley Street is a pretty heavily traveled street. It's a very steep hill. And I would hate to see more cars parked out front because it's more convenient than parking in a driveway and finding it difficult to get out. Um, my last thing, and this is just a point of um, about the neighborhood, is that the style of houses, and most of them were built in the late 20s to early 30s, um, is sort of unique. And I don't know what the, there's no, perspective of this dwelling from a um, you know street side view but I hope it's somewhat similar to what the neighborhood has I mean certainly if you go up Shirley Street and when you hit Adela there are a variety of types of construction but the the basic neighborhood there that's on Shirley Street uh, Robert Ave Boyce Street they all have some very interesting um, and architecturally unique type of dwellings. Most have been modified over the years. A lot of the original characteristics have been changed or covered up, but they still have an identity in the way they look from the street. And that would be, you know, just a suggestion. Um, and, and I really hope they can keep a few trees on that lot too, because it's a, it's actually a nice little piece of property. Mm -hmm. um, and I have nothing against them building as long as things are legit and, it, the uh, the neighbors don't have any negative consequences. Okay. Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak? Uh, yes, I just have to make sure that our butters are satisfied first, then we can let you come back up. You certainly can, through the chair. Um, if you'd like to pass that around while we're having further discussion. Thank you. I'd like to see that. Too. Mm. Okay, so if you could approach the lectern again, please, sir. One of the things we have heard concerns about are the walls that are currently on the property. Have we have any plans to address those? <clears throat> if you can speak through the microphone, please. Uh, yes, I mean, concerning the lot, the street is steep, but the lot itself is flat. There's a retaining wall, a field stone retaining wall on the left, and then there's a retaining wall on the right existing that's been there for many years. Uh, I believe Mr. Hall's talked to the abutting neighbor. We're going to take, obviously, every precaution there is possible to not disturb them, but Mr. Hall said, you know, if the, anything ever arises, that they will certainly take care of anything. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, um, we're going to try to, you know, uh, landscape the property uh, to match na the neighborhood, uh, and also it's. I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to interrupt. I apologize. We have to speak through the microphone so the folks at home can hear you. So if you can just go back up there. Okay. Just really got form like this. Before. That's okay. As, to, to address the neighbors, um, I want to keep as many trees there as I can. I was talking to these people the other day, and um, I said, there's a big ash, I'd like to keep that there. There's some beautiful white ash on that lot, and there's a cherry tree on the side. I'll keep as many trees as I can, because the root base, I live on it. I have a property in Charlton where there's, you can't cut the trees, it's the whole roof, of, and we do have a little bit of a slope there, so i definitely work with them. I'd like to keep it. I'm not gonna knock down the trees yet. Right, okay. Definitely not. So I'd just like to ask, actually, the abutters again, um, would it be acceptable to you to maintain the current walls, or would you prefer to have them replaced, or is that gonna be something that would be decided as needed if the walls were interrupted? Yes, please. Most likely replace. The only reason why I say that is I think when uh, the Peckhams, the previous owner, uh, was using that lot, when uh, he just put them by, by hand. Sure. I don't think, because I know it starts off um, as like a one layer, but I know when you further get down and there's a lot of overgrowth, it's almost like a three tier. Mm -hmm. And I think when it gets to the back of the lot, 
uh, once they stop building, it most likely will probably collapse mm -hmm. because it's just rocks that are just thrown there. Sure. Okay. Um, Caleb, have you viewed this property personally? I have. And do you think those walls have any retention property to them, or are they just could have piled up? I mean, I'm, I'm picturing this, uh, you know, the old farm wall, so to speak, where they would just clear the fields and stack the stones. And yeah, I couldn't say. I I would caution the board on designing the lot for the applicant, and mm -hmm. even even discussing it really. Right. Okay. Just stick to the variance. And sure. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're satisfying the abutters before we move further with the decision. Okay. Thank you, sir. So. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Chicolo, do you have any other? I'd like other to ask questions? the second abutter. I'd like to ask him a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You live further up the hill, on the opposite side. Yes. Which the the slope of that street is increased where you live. Is there now a problem with runoff from your property to the next to your neighbor below you? Um, not that it's ever been reported to us, although so you, he has a significant amount of bait to that. I'm sorry. He has a significant amount of basement flooding. Okay. We get water in our basement once or twice a year. It's got to be the perfect storm that hits the right way. Okay. And then it's not much. Um, all of the properties on that street, for the most part, I shouldn't say all, on my side of the street, and I think the pitch of the street is very, pretty steady. I, I don't have a map to look at the elevation lines, but there are well-built retaining walls between each property. Typically, we're on the corner lot, so we, Things don't quite apply to us the way they do everybody else, but typically it goes property, drive, retaining wall, driveway, house. Property, retaining wall, driveway, house. Could you and, describe those retaining walls, what they are made of? Um, they're stone and, and con uh, cement. They're, I mean, they're, they're crafted retaining walls that are, that don't, you know, they, don't, they haven't leaned over in the last hundred years, so they're fairly well built, I would say. Okay, thank you. Okay? Thank you. Okay, so as Caleb pointed out, we are discussing the walls and the different issues with the, uh, right. that, but when we do make a decision, if we do make a decision this evening regarding the variance, we can only stick to the issues surrounding the variance, which is the frontage and the square footage of the lot. Just wanna make that clear for everyone. Um, Anything further, Mr. Chicolo? I do not. Okay. Um, I'd like to see the house plans that they passed out. Okay. I'm sorry, I should have passed those around. I apologize. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, you do. <laughs> Just so it's all recorded for the folks at home. fact when I was talking to my attorney who did the passing on this and they did the research on it he said that um the lot fits right in with all the other lots there it's not undersized it's not oversized it's the standard lot from when that neighborhood was developed and like I said we don't need a variance for the size of the house or anything else and um my builder wanted to add one more thing too also uh I just wanted to mention the, the house is it's going to be a modular home and the house is already done and built in the factory and just waiting to be shipped <laughs> until this issue came up with the conflict of uh, the mm -hmm. buildable lot. So it's quite a financial burden on this stuff because the house is done. It's, it's already wrapped in, on the trailers in Pennsylvania waiting to be shipped. Because we so. have, we have uh, documentation, documentation that the house, the lot was built and it was assessed buildable and the other, and and I thank the staff in the Iron Town Hall for how getting me on in July to get this hearing. They, and they really helped me to thinking we might need this variance. I wanted to get, we wanted to get here as quick as we could, you know, put all the information. So since you've offered that information, um, was there a timeline discrepancy here, Caleb, between the time that no. they asked you in terms of it was a buildable lot or not? 
not sure I understand. What, what I'm trying to do is, so part of the requirements of variance, one of the options we have here is if it's a financial burden on the property owner. But I'm trying to determine whether or not this issue was brought to light prior to his ordering the house or after? No, it was after. The, um, the homeowner actually emailed me with a question question about the construction of the home that wasn't even relevant to the law and that's when I I recognized that number and I knew there was an issue with the law and that's when I notified him the house had already been ordered at that time okay mm -hmm. but he, he did have documentation from the previous building inspector that indicated that it was a buildable lot at one time and then it may not have been so it was I believe I believe the only letter he had in his possession at the time said it was a buildable lot right. from a previous inspector. I think I just think that's important for the board to hear the people <coughs> here. Thank you very much. Sir so, Okay, so I got it right from Nick his email. I have it. I, I had I saw that. I did okay. read that. All right. so, yeah. Um, I just want to go over for the folks at home, the abutters and yourself. Um, so we have under section 9.5 of the Auburn Zoning Board uh, bylaws, the 9.5.5 mandatory findings. Before the grant of any variance from the requirements of this bylaw, the Board of Appeals must specify that, number one, section one, owing to the circumstances related to the soil conditions, shape, or topography of the land structures, and especially affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located. A literal enforcement of the provisions of the bylaw would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, and two, that desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the bylaw. So in order for us to grant a variance, that's the standards that we have to meet. We have to be able to say that it was, will not, um, it's related to soil conditions, shape, or topography of the land. Uh, not affecting the general bylaw of the zoning district. A little enforcement of the provision would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, and that we can grant relief without substantial detriment to the public good and without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent and purpose of the bylaw. So with that being said, uh, do we have any further comments or questions? I do. Motion to close the public hearing. Uh, if I have we have I'm sorry. One. That's okay. Uh, Is Ms. the Roach? property connected to town water and sewer? Or is it going to be private? Okay, public water and sewer. Okay. Okay, that's it. Okay, anything else? Nope. Just, if I may, through the yes, chair, please. I just have one comment. If this lot was held in separate ownership, the whole issue with this lot is it was held in common with 118 Boy Street mm -hmm. at the time of the zoning change. If somebody else held this lot, it would be a buildable lot today. Right. The only thing that's causing this to not be buildable is the fact that it was owned with 118 Boy Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all things considered, are we satisfied with that inquiry? I am. Ladies? Yes. Okay. I'm good. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so do I have a motion on the, uh, the proposal, the application before us? I'll make a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the variance um, at the property of 8 Shirley Street uh, under the 5.4 dimensional regulation table to grant relief for the lot size and for the frontage. Do we need to do two by matter of no, the, course? The it's all side. one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll comment on the conditions, mm -hmm. if it will help you for the opinion. Absolutely. Um, I, first, I think it's, it does not, it, it doesn't create a substantial detriment. Um, most of the lots, other lots on that street certainly don't meet the requirements and are a little bit smaller. Um, and it doesn't seem like anyone in the neighborhood is overly concerned with something being constructed on here. Um, I think it would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, considering that the house has been ordered and the applicant was under the impression from a letter from the town that it was in fact a buildable lot and there's been some question as to some back and forth, but it seems he was under the impression that it was. Um, I think the shape of the lot, uh, the pitch, certainly limits what you can do on that lot. Um, and 
and I think that's it as far as the mandatory findings unless somebody else wants to add. I think that covers it. So we have a motion to approve. Um, do I have a second? Second. Uh, okay, so Ms. Blaze, you'll vote? Approve. And I also vote to approve, so congratulations. So just so you know, also I'm going to read this publicly. Um, we have some conditions on a variance. Uh, and this will be part of your packet. Kayla will provide those for you. But it's, the variance shall become effective only after it has been recorded at the Worcester Registry of Deeds and a copy of the registrar's receipt returned to the town clerk. The applicant shall abide by all approvals and conditions from state agencies, all the town boards, departments, and commissions. Construction hours shall be Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Saturday from 8 to noon, and no work on Sundays or holidays. The lot shall be developed in accordance with the approved plan. The applicant shall submit a 24 by 36 as-built plan to the building commissioner once construction is completed. Otherwise, uh, unless otherwise modified by the decisions of the Planning Board or Board of Appeals, the applicant shall comply with Chapter 16, Earth Filling, Section 5.0, Standard for Filling. And the applicant must by, abide by all regulations and conditions of the 11th amended order as set forth in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 132, Sections 8, 11, and 12, in, accord, in addition to Mass General Law, Chapter 132A, Section 1F, as this property is located within the Asian Longhorn Beetle Quarantine Area of Auburn. Okay, so those are our technical requirements. Congratulations, I wish you the best of luck. I'm certain you can contact Caleb and uh, the rest of the paperwork we provided to you. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. So the next um, topic on the agenda this evening, we had a reorganization, but I would like to propose to the board, since we do not have a vice chair present and we are missing a member, if you would be so inclined to um, probably postpone the reorganization until the next meeting, so we're all present. Mr. Hall. Sure. I'll make a motion to continue the reorganization to the next meeting. Okay. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. So we just have some decisions to be signed. Um, and while we're waiting for that paperwork to be available, we have the minutes for 5 18 17 and 6 15 17. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the meetings as submitted? Six uh, is not there. The, just the five. minutes, I'm sorry. Just, five. just the meetings for 5 is there. Just the minutes. Okay, I'm sorry. So I'll amend that then. We have the minutes for 5 18 17, not to include 6 15 17. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? Motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Great. Okay. So we have a couple of decisions to do. Uh, and then we have the next meeting is August 17th, 2017. Administrative responsibilities I've concluded for this evening. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Second, all in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. You've taken this with you. I took my.